All right, now I'm going to show you the pen tool again and then how to use it the way it's intended to be used by professionals once you're used to it. And that's that you plot straights and curves at the same time, just like this little demo is showing. All right, so here we go. I'm going to create this shape. And I don't need to make a new layer because it will always be a new path in my organizational layer. And I'm going to start with this straight and then immediately go to where I want the curve to end, maybe like here, and then click and drag and then set that curve. Okay, then I move out from there and I set the next curve. Then I move from there and I click and drag to set the next curve. And it can be helpful to swap it, right, so you can see it clearly. So I'm seeing the outline. I'll set that curve and now I'm on a straight again. But I'm going to click and drag to set that curve. And then it's going to come around and give me an average curve. Which I will use. And then I'll use the straight. And then I'll set going back to the curve. Like that. So you can see that used very, very few anchor points without any cornering to split the anchor points. And then if I flip it, right, and I click off of it, I can see the only place that might need some smoothing is right there. And so I'm going to use my smooth tool. I have to see the anchor points in order to smooth it. And then I'm just going to average that one out. And then that's it. It's done. So once you become pretty familiar with these tools, you'll be able to find the right ones for whatever job you want to do, whether it's the shape tool. Oh, I can clean this one up a little bit. I can do that with the pencil. Oops. Got to see the anchor points first. I wish the anchor points weren't always so small in Illustrator, but that's just how it is but they are colored. So even when you zoom in, they stay just as small <laughs> so that you can see your curve. And again, what's the difference between the vectors and the raster is the raster, you can see all those pixels, but the vector is always perfectly clean, no matter how big it or small it is. Okay, now that I've kind of finished this wing, I'm going to make sure I like it. I'm going to mess with this edge a little bit. And I'm just going to use the pencil tool, my favorite tool. To simplify that, you see how the smooth kind of really helped me there. And then I can use the delete tool to get rid of some of these extra anchor points. So that it looks a little bit more uniform. Good. Okay, now I like that wing. I like those two together. How do I flip those and make those match? Because this is a central symmetrical. Well, remember, you can hit Command R to get your rulers. And then you can plot guides. So I'm going to plot a guide right in the middle. And then I'm going to use the large selection tool, the black arrow, to select and hold down shift both of these paths. So you can see how it selected both of those. Now I'm going to say edit copy. I can also do command C. And then unlike Photoshop, I'm not going to do command V. I'm going to do edit copy in place, which is, which is shift command V. And that will place an exact duplicate of those two layers. Then I'm going to right click, say transform, reflect. This is the version of flip horizontal in Illustrator. And then I can hold down shift while I move it and it will lock it on its axle, right? So this is perfectly symmetrical and move it into place. 
Now I can lock that layer and make a new organizational layer, which is something other than the wings, right? This is a very complex shape. This is a perfect shape to do with the pen tool. Because if I do it with the pencil alone, it's going to look kind of wonky. I'll show you even if I use a tablet. If I just kind of draw it. Right? And I use the pencil a lot. I'm pretty practiced with it. I'm not going to get the precision I would with the pen tool instead. So let's fill that with black. Right. And it's not terrible. In fact, it's better than I thought it was because I had it the smooth set. But I don't like this. And so let's try to do that same thing. I actually won't delete that, but I'll just turn it off. Let's try it with the pen tool. Let's see if I need to plug in here. Almost. Okay, so I'm going to take the regular pen, and I'm going to start and find the curve I want to plot. Right. Then I'm going to go out from that and click back on the anchor point. So once you plot a curve, it Im immediately averages a curve from it. Right. So if I don't want a curve, I need to go and click with the pen tool on the anchor point, and that converts it now back to a straight. And so I'm going to go to a straight, and then I'm going to go to a curve right here. Right? And before I go too much further, I'm going to swap it so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to click on the straight so that I can set the curve here more exactly. Then I'm going to click back because that's not quite the curve I want to a straight. And so what I'm doing is every anchor point is curved on one side and then straight on the other side. So I can fully control the curve coming out from each side. But the trick to this is just picking the right place for the anchor points. So that curve doesn't make sense, right? So I click on it, go back to here. Oops. Click and drag to set that curve click back to get to the straight again, click to my next curve because I want it to be pointed there, pull the handle, click back on it so I can control the curve coming out of it, click on the handle, click back, set a slight curve, click back, Set us, let it be straight there, set the curve for the visor, click back, set it here. And this is if you just really want to match your refined sketch exactly. But I think I can actually probably improve upon my refined sketch a little bit, but I'll get there. Okay, click back. Click back. So this is very often how the pin tool and plotting curves works. Instead of adjusting your handles, you're just setting up the anchor points where you think they're most effective. And then clicking back on the anchor point so that you can control the curve coming out of it. A really shallow curve here. All right, now I close the path. Now I can swap it. And that's a little bit cleaner. And I can also use my small selection tool, right? And I can adjust these curves so that they look a little bit more like what I want. Or I can adjust the placement of the anchor point, just clicking on them individually. So I get a really strong shape. And if I want to add an anchor point, I can do that, which I haven't shown you yet. So I'm going to add an anchor point on this bill so that I can put kind of a, a hook in that nose. 
So under the pin tool, it's the plus sign. We can add an anchor point on the path. And that allows us to then use this, the small selection tool, or what's called the direct selection tool, to straighten that out a little bit. And I'm just going to fix this beak to where I like it between the handles of the curves and the placement of the anchors. I have more control of that shape. So it looks a little eagle-ish as well, even though it's our mascot. All right, so I'm happy with that. Next, I'm going to show you a professional technique. Woohoo! This is how I know if I'm hiring someone that someone really knows how to use Illustrator. How do we punch out a shape from another shape? Because I have this eye, right? And I'm not saying that's exactly where I want the eye to be, but I want a perfect circle cut out. It's not a bad place for it. So what I'm going to do is first make a path for that eye. As I plug in my computer and turn off these Microsoft things. All right. So you can see how I've changed the bill quite a bit, right, from my sketch. And I have full control of the anchor points to kind of make those decisions. But now I want to add another shape. Ah, come on, quit. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is create a perfect circle. Now, should I use the pen tool or the pencil tool to draw the perfect circle? No, I should use the shape tool. Makes a lot more sense. Come on. I think Microsoft messed with me. me some control. Okay, good. I'm saved. But it's not letting me change tools. So this version, this is a new version of Illustrator. I am noticing some processing glitches that I haven't seen in previous versions. So this is one of them. But make sure you go to file and save your work. And when you need to, you can just close it. Once it's saved, you can quit it. And remember, this is the AI file. And then when you open it again, Illustrator will reload and hopefully not have those glitches. So if a tool's not changing for you, it's crashing. And I haven't known Illustrator to crash all that often before. All right, now, where was I? I was selecting this path. This is a fill. How do I punch out that eye? Well, I'm going to make a perfect circle using the shape tool. To make the perfect circle, I hold down shift while I drag the circle, right? Now, let's say I want the eye right there. Right now, it's filled in with black. Just so I can visualize it, I'm going to fill it in with white. Okay? But very important to understand, this does not mean that I have punched a hole in my black shape, right? Because my black shape is my black shape, and this white shape is the white shape. And we want our logo not to be black and white. We want our logo to be to be all black shapes. So when I place them like this, right, how do I cut this shape, punch it out of this shape? Well, we're going to use the same tool we used in the video's last class to merge when we did that kind of flipping and making something more symmetrical. And it's called the Pathfinder tool. So we're going to select both of them, holding down Shift. So now they're both selected. The shape you want to cut out from the shape underneath needs to be on top. Right? So this shape is selected. Hold down Shift. You can see they're selected right on the side there. And now I'm going to use this Pathfinder tool, which you can also find under the window. Pathfinder, and instead of merging them together, which would just make them all one shape, I am going to use this second. I'm going to minus the front from the back. Boom. And now I have a hole cut out. So now that's all one shape. 